Hey there Libra! Welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe, as well as leave me a comment and let me know if this reading resonates with you. So, um, today we're going to do a problem reaction solution reading. And we're going to start out with the supernatural cards. We're going to pull a couple from that deck, and then we're going to pull some astrology cards. And then however that goes, we're going to pull a couple more cards, depending on what happens. So, um, I just wanted to thank you all so much for all your likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. Um, I've been searching pretty hard for a full-time position, and um, I'm probably going to be going back into a full-time job soon. So, with that being said, I just wanted to let you all know that if you still really enjoy these readings if they're helping you and you would like me to continue please leave me a comment and let me know that this reading does indeed resonate and um you know I'll try to keep that in mind in the future so I'm having to choose between my art and my profession and this is on this is kind of side gig but I'm not really getting a lot of feedback I don't know if a lot of my people just are kind of not sure about tarot or what but um, <clears throat> but please let me know so that I can make a decision for my future if you like the readings let me know and ring the bell so you'll get your notifications all right so let's go ahead and get this reading started let's do a love reading for Libra Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Love for Libra. Alright, so we had the Seven of Blades and the Knight of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands. Okay. So, um, looks like you've got a lot going on here, Libra. Alright, <clears throat> so we're going to make this reading a little bit longer because four cards jumped out. Alright, so we've got, for your first card, we've got four of wands, uh, seven of wands. Um, this card is like, um, y you know... You may be looking for trouble. Someone, um, if not you, someone in your immediate vicinity. And also, this is the answer to your question. So if you've come here today with something heavy on your mind, this is the answer to your question. So this is Meg from the Supernatural television show. She is a demon. And basically, she just uh, released the whole... Um, she released the... The devil from his cage all right she brought the apocalypse on so i don't know what you're dealing with libra but this is not the first time that you've got this card okay so prior to this it seems like i had a video that went pretty much through the roof for my channel you know i don't have that many big, big views but but um you know it's this man and he's running and he's got all these swords and he looks like he's getting away with murder so if this isn't you, Libra, better watch your back, okay? And then for the factors affecting your situation, we've got um, the Knight of Pentagrams. So this is an evil demon who is definitely up to no good. And um, <clears throat> so this first card, the Blades, that's associated with Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini. So that definitely could be you. Who's uh, up to no good, Libra. But this, this Knight of Pentagrams, this is an Earth sign. This is going to be a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus. And basically, this is a really bad character. Uh, the Knight of Pentagrams, he, um, he's causing all kinds of trouble. So, um, watch out for that. That's in your immediate future. And then we have the Ten of Wands. Wands are associated with Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries. So if this is you, you've been carrying the burdens of too much. 
Um, in the original tarot card, it has um, a man carrying ten magic wands, and it's breaking his back. He's carrying more than his fair share of the of the work. Okay. Now, sometimes this is self-imposed, so you have to be careful not to allow yourself to self-sabotage. Um, <clears throat> but most likely this is someone associated with you who's carrying these burdens. Um, somebody who is a uh, Leo Sagittarius or an Aries. And then we've got the Queen of Bones here. And um, the Queen of Bones is also known as the Queen of Wands, also a Leo Sagittarius or Aries. And, <clears throat> you know, this has to do with um, a woman who is self... Um, actuating they do not need anyone to um you know help them get by they do appreciate help when they get it but they definitely can make it on their own so let's take a look at this card because i'm not um i'm not really familiar with this i don't know who this is um in the supernatural show so it's kind of throwing me for a loop definitely easier to read the original deck but I really love these cards they really really resonate with me so the Queen of Bones all right <clears throat> the Queen of Bones is an ambitious alluring leader who gets what she wants she loves attention and gets it whether you find yourself fighting the Winchesters or facing a more mundane battle, use ingenuity and determination to see you through to victory. All right, so this is your final outcome. So um, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, maybe you're just trying to get a better job or better, um, you know, whatever it is that you've put in all your efforts towards. And looks like you've got fire behind you there, so I know you're going to make it, whatever you want to do. But don't be self-sabotaging, just because you're carrying too much weight. Sometimes when you get weighted down with too much, you kind of just give up. You just, you just don't want to deal with it anymore. So don't let yourself become stagnant and not look forward to better, more, um, more long-term happiness okay all right let's go ahead and pull some um astrology cards um we've got juno under your love reading we've got um right underneath this i'm up to no good card we've got juno and Let's see what the Knight of Pentacles has to offer with uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for my Libras. The fifth house. All right. And with the man who's carrying too many burdens. We have Pluto. So this is a... Uh, Scorpio. If you have a love life, there might be a Scorpio in your life who's carrying too many burdens. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, love. And for your final outcome, Jupiter. <clears throat> All right, Libra, so you got a um, packed little reading right here. All right, so first of all, we've got this lady. She's, you know, she's getting away with murder here. She's definitely a Libra or somewhat of a, um some kind of air sign. It could be an Aquarius or a Gemini. 
but um, don't forget we're in retrograde right now, so communications are going to be hard. You might run into some exes, old friends might come out of the woodwork, you might run into them at Walmart and they might try to buddy-buddy with you. Don't fall for these acts of kindness from haters, okay? If they have done you wrong in the past, there's no reason for you to think that they won't do it again. Alright, so we got Juno. Oops, I'm not in the right book. We're over here looking and looking. Juno. The partner. Alright, so this is your love reading. And this is your partner who is maybe up to no good, okay? What's your partner up to? Well, this is your sign, Libra. So maybe you're up to no good. But it has to do with your partner, this reading. So it says, when Juno appears in the reading, it is time to take a look at your relationship and evaluate what is working and what is not. Make sure that your focus is not only on history of this relationship, but also the possible future of it. So Juno never makes a, fil a flippant or sudden decision. She looks at every possible angle of every situation and it's perfect time to make a list of the pros and cons or indiscretions. Is your partner meeting your needs? Are you meeting their needs? If your partner strives for stability and you want excitement, how are you going to balance these desires? I do my hair toss. Okay. <laughs> if you are not partnered up, there's a great time to do some self-reflection on what you bring to the table and the boundaries that you want to set or even that you want to be in a romantic relationship at all. All right. So, you know, if you're going to college or you're, or you're single, you know, sometimes a relationship can be more stress than is necessary. Other times, um, a relationship and a partner can help you to get through these hard times. If your partner's not helping you get through these hard times, then, you know, you need to work on these issues. Here's the key words. Commitment, trust, equality, support, cooperation, infidelity, possessiveness, jealousy, imbalance, and oppression. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with what oppression is, but um, oppression is just keeping the man down. You know, um, society does have a way of doing this, and you have to consciously put forth an effort to better your life in order to not be oppressed by the system. Um, some people believe that there is no oppression anymore now that slavery has been lifted. That type of oppression, that type of, um, fascism is a thing of the past. But that, that is absolutely not true. Um, the system is there to take care of certain people. Not everyone. <laughs> I certainly don't fall into the qual qualifications. So, um, so if that's the case and you do not qualify for all this additional assistance that the government offers, that colleges offer, tuition, things like that, you're going to have to learn how to hustle on a whole nother level. You might have to learn how to manipulate the stock market, um, sell goods, um, affiliate marketing. There's a whole number of things that you can do to make residual income, such as write a book, um, make mugs or t-shirts or something of that nature. Um, these type of things can help you. It can even help your local community. Um, and it can keep you on the right track. If you have um, busy hands, right, then you won't have time for any of that other drama and uh, anything that is going to drag you down. So let's take a look at the fifth house, which is right here underneath this yellow-eyed demon, the Knight of Pentacles. So under the Knight of Pentacles, we've got an earth sign. This is the man who killed Sam and Dean's mother. And let me read the Knight of Pentagrams for you real quick first. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm sorry. I'm so congested. 
I've got a couple gardenias blooming in the yard and they have just got me so bogged down. All right, so the Knight of Pentacles, upright, Azazel is a single-minded, thoroughly evil Prince of Hell who will stop at nothing to achieve his goal of freeing Lucifer. The Knight of Pentagrams advises you to put action behind your goals, especially ones related to your career or your finances. You have big dreams, and now is the time to go after them. All right. And then your fifth house is what... So this is right here in your um, current and present situation under the fifth house. It says, this is one of the most playful and joyous cards. Having this energy on your reading is a clear-cut sign that you need to loosen up a little bit and have some fun. What activities do you find pleasurable and how can you devote more time to them? If you're feeling guilty about doing the things that you love, it's only a matter of time before you start to resent your responsibilities. In the long run, you will be productive and happier overall if you have a bit of fun. Alright, so I know that my mom was a Libra and she never really, she never even worried about her career. She, she just um, wasn't interested in education. She wasn't interested in stocks. She wasn't interested in um, residual income or um, anything. She was mainly just worried about, you know, her house and her needs and her job. But... I feel like if she had allowed herself to have a little bit of fun, maybe get a hobby that she really liked that could make some money, um, instead of letting all of her hobbies take all her money, then she might have made some serious money, okay? So sometimes it's important whenever you're about to go blow that big check that you just got, think about, is there a way that I can invest this money to make money? This is very important. Okay, that's what I think about when I think of the fifth house. All right, so then we've got Castiel. And he is just carrying the burdens of too many. And I feel like, you know, with this weight on you, you're definitely carrying too many burdens. Um, this can happen by allowing people to take advantage of you. If you're in a job or a relationship or even your children, take advantage of your kind-heartedness you're not doing yourself any favors by doing everybody's hard work for them. Um, you should definitely make your children um, do their own share of the work so that they learn responsibility. And also, that's going to take some of that weight off of you and give you the opportunity to update that resume and move on forward and really make some sturdy ground for you. All right, so then we got Pluto right underneath it, which is the Scorpio card, um, the planet for Scorpio, I think. I'm pretty positive. Hold on. So Scorpio and Pluto, this is a water sign, I think. Hold on. Pluto. Here we go. The Reaper. Okay, so you're carrying too many burdens, and you've got the Reaper card. Alright, so this is all about reaping what you sow, and this has to do with anything, like, you know, if you're sowing seeds of negativity, you're not going to get positivity. So if you're surrounding yourself with people who complain 24-7, whine and never ever do anything to better their lives, cut them out of your life. And stop acting that way if it's affected you, all right? Pluto in a reading points to a big change coming your way. It's likely an ending of some sort. This will feel like a sudden event, but if you look deep enough into your psyche, you'll see that this was a long time in the works. So this death needs to happen to make room for new life. The initiation of a new cycle is painful, but fighting it will just drag those feelings out. 
If you have been waiting for this big ending or some type of monumental change to take place, know that it will be arriving shortly. Sometimes the anticipation of knowing that something out that something out of your control is about to happen is almost worse than the actual event. Freedom from your old structures, uh, freedom from your old structures and anxiety is a relief. And it is that moment that you can begin to rebuild. All right. So with the death of uh, something is going to be the rebirth of something new. So you may have to quit your crap job or cut out some something that's not serving you in order to make room for something better. Um, definitely, definitely. And, you know, sometimes you have to work on your goals while you're still working. You know, sometimes you have to work on multiple goals at once while you're still working full time. I, I definitely, I know this feeling. <laughs> So, definitely. I have way too many, too many obligations. Uh, this here reading's probably not going to happen much longer. If you like these readings, please let me know. Because I'm going to have to make some harsh decisions to weigh the scales. You know Libra. You know what I'm talking about. Queen of Bones. All right. So with this Queen of Bones, you know, you've got somebody here who yeah, definitely is um, a force to be reckoned with, okay? And this is Bones or Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. So this person is standing in your way. And um, the card that you get with it is Jupiter. So let's take a look here. This is your final outcome. So you got this queen of bones. She's standing here like this. She's got fire behind her. She's She looks like she's cursing you. And um, Jupiter is the philosopher. Okay. So it says, the change in luck is coming your way and nothing can show it down. If you've been going through difficulties, this relief can feel like, an, like it had arrived at the nick of time. The faith in the idea that we do deserve good things can be powerful manifestation tool. You are becoming a better version of yourself and positively positivity is radiating off of you. Sharing this energy with others fosters discussion and the interpersonal connection that we all need. Jupiter takes your ideas and makes them bigger and better. Just don't become so rigid in your beliefs that you leave no room for critical thinking. This is true. Um, <clears throat> expanding knowledge requires questioning things, and we are not exempt from that practice. All right, so, so sometimes um, old belief systems, old um, habits, or old, you know, you get comfortable in your position and you don't want to go through the process of change. It's cha we all are just so comfortable. You know, we like what we, we've done and I know I'm going to have to fill out. Um, actually, I just did. I, I just updated my resume again. And um, when you really want that job or that change of life, you have to um, personalize it. All right, so if you're an artist and you're personalizing someone else's art to sell it, you really have to sell it on what the querent, the person that you're trying to sell to, wants. Whether or not you're ready to compromise your standards to fit theirs, if you want that money in your pocket, you're going to do it. So therefore, if you're trying to get a good job, then you might have to put on your resume the name of the company that you're wanting to you have to like personalize it for them you know just to make them feel special like you went through the time to make this resume just for them and almost always I've gotten the job so whatever's holding you back don't let it hold you back anymore okay let's pull some manifestation cards and see what we can get you doing 
that will help you get on a better path because this carrying too many burdens, you know, this oppression, um, not making enough money is what I feel like is going on because you've got this burden and I feel like, um, it's just not helping you. It's not helping you at all. All right, so for your um, factors affecting the situation, create an energetic vortex by setting intentions for your life. All right, so anytime that you start a new project, things do not finish out right until that project is finished, all right? You're um, in the back of your mind and your subconscious, you're wishing that you had got that done you're wishing that you had got that education finished you're wishing that you had got that painting done you're wishing that you had done that right the first time but um you know if you're emanating positivity then you don't have to worry about it okay it says appreciate what you have and stay positive all right now that's up underneath the knight of pentagrams so you've got this negative um demon this knight of pentacles and in the fifth house which is all about change and bettering your life and it says to appreciate what you do have and stay positive and be sure to emanate positivity so when you do this uh, opportunities will just arise for you anytime that people see you they're going to want to be around you they're going to want to buy your products they're going to want to go to your church, see your people, whatever it is that you do. They're going to want to be a part of it. Uh-oh, trouble in paradise. Okay, so underneath your ten of wands, we've got Castiel sitting there on the bench, looking sad, staring off into nowhere, looking depressed. He, you know, um, underneath the sign of Pluto, which is absolutely saying that something has to end and something new has to come into place but you can't you can't change until that ending comes into place so it says trouble in paradise so what are you gonna do libra what are you gonna do you gotta get those scales balanced again clearly they're not balanced you're carrying all the weight so you have to balance those scales either by forcing yourself to get more money from the work that you're doing or forcing some way to make things more balanced for you so that you're not carrying all those burdens. Queen of Bones. All right, so the Queen of Bones, she looks like she's casting a spell on you. Jupiter's over here telling you that it's time to lighten up, it's time to be happy, time to take a vacation. So definitely you want to do that. What are we going to do to manifest it, Libra? What are we going to do to manifest it? Love, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Ooh. Write the story as if you have... As if you already have what you dream of. Alright, so I bought a book one time after Hurricane Katrina when I was in an all-time low. And it was for manifesting. It was talking about the secret. You know what I'm talking about? Oprah used to talk about it all the time. Jim Carrey is always talking about manifesting. Alright, so it says write down your goals as if you've already got them. This is called... Um, manifesting. Uh, it's not the right word. I'm looking for something. I can't remember what you call it, but, um, but anywho, basically what you do is you start a diary and, um, on each page, on each, um, line of the page, I want you to write down your dreams, what you thought your life was going to be like when you were just a little kid, you know? If you thought that you were going to have a big mansion on the hill, then write it down like you already have it. I have a townhouse. I own 
my own business. Not I want to own, not I will own, or I, you know, go ahead and put it in words that are already in existence. And as soon as you put it into manifestation, it's going to seek in, seep into your subconscious. You're going to be dreaming about it and it's going to manifest for you. All right, Libra. Um, I'm sorry that you're carrying these heavy burdens. I hope that some of this, um, some of this reading really helps you. If it does, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if this reading helped you. Thank you so much. And, um, I'm only here to give you guys the best advice that I can give. And, um, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to continue doing this. So, um... Give me some good kudos. Give me some shares, likes, comments, and um, ring that bell. And um, most likely I'll see you next week. If not, I might just do like a knowledgeable video about something. <clears throat> Y'all come back and see me.